Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, as always, and today we are joined by City Council candidate for Ward 12, as you see in the background behind him, Mr. Stephen Fan. Stephen, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for having me on uh, on the show here, Chris. Uh, Stephen, if you've uh, listened to the show before, you know what the first question is going to come out of my mouth. Where's your sense of duty to serve come from? <laughs> Where, you know, I uh, thought long and hard on this question. Actually, it probably wasn't too long because, I mean, it kind of inspired my passion to get involved um, is uh, from our family roots. Uh, you know, my, my father is um, a refugee. He came to Canada after the Vietnam War, and uh, he, he's always um, looked at Canada as a, a place of hope and opportunity and freedom. And, and I've um, asked him, you know, why Canada when 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 we were growing up, I asked him, why did you choose Canada? Out of all the other countries you could have gone to, why Canada? And, and that's the number one thing he said to me was Canada is yeah, a place of uh, hope, opportunity and freedom. And I see very same similarities in Calgary that, you know, time, it, it's time for a change. Uh, I've talked to thousands of residents now and uh, they all agree you know it's, it's time for some change in our in our city whether that's economic development or removing this sense of the old guard and and putting in some fresh new faces some younger folks a, a new generation of thinking and a different way of thinking and looking at things uh, uh, just a refresh of perspective and this is wh why I, I i got involved too and and actually i've been probably getting involved in, in government in 2015. Um, but yeah, the, the sense of duty to serve has always been from my family. Um, my father, you know, started a small business here and, and I always, always see him giving back uh, as a young kid, whether um, that's, you know, giving m money to a homeless person, someone that couldn't afford their groceries, my father has always been so giving and our uh, family business as well. You know, if someone couldn't afford to fix an appliance or a TV, um, my family would give them a break or try to work with them to make sure at the end of the day that they're still taken care of and not breaking the bank financially. And uh, yeah, so I've just, it's, I guess his his duty to give back to a country that has given given him so much um, has been instilled in me, and and I guess you know political uh, is is the way for me to give back. I mean, I, I volunteer on a regular basis on uh, a few boards. I, I give back in church. I do community um, events and and try to give back wherever I can because I love this country. I love our city. I love Ward Twelve, and I love our community and. We just have so many amazing people that live here. So sorry, that was a very long uh, <laughs> explanation. It, it was, and you took about five of my follow-up questions out of my breath. So I can't even <laughs> ask you the follow-up <laughs> questions, but I'm going to anyway, because this is the great yep. thing about my show. I get to choose the direction, but you get to talk about what you want. Um, I want to talk about the duty to give back. You talked about giving back volunteer wise. You talk about giving back politically. You can give back in many different ways. But in 2021, you've decided that this was the year you were going to get involved politically to put your name on the ballot. What was it about 2021 that made you think to yourself, OK, this is the time. This is the time for the change, as you talked about in your opening statement there. But this is also the time for Stephen to be elected on city council. Yeah, so uh, looking at the political landscape of the councillors that were staying on board and those that were leaving, um, especially Ward 12, I mean, with uh, Councillor Keating being here for 10 plus years and also Nancy being uh, the mayor for 10 plus years, uh, as soon as they announced that they weren't coming back, I thought to myself, well, uh, you know, maybe this is this is the, the the change year for all of Calgary for us to finally effectively elect people, uh, a, a whole new um, slate of city councillors, I guess you could say, and have them come in and, and do some positive things in our city and make a positive change. Um, and I'm sure 
most people understand that as an incumbent in a ward, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to compete with an incumbent. So that was another big factor why I threw my name in the hat here um, to, to run for city councillor is that because councillor Keating wasn't running again. And I sat down um, with a breakfast meeting with him and discussed, you know, what, what, uh, what his thoughts are and how I can effectively represent War 12 and some of his advice as a potential future city councillor in our ward. We, uh, you've used the word change a lot over the last few minutes, and I want to ask the question, what does change look like to you? What does change mean to you? And why are you the embodiment of the change that Calgary so desperately needs at this time? Excellent question. I, I, you know, I get asked this a lot at the doors, like, what would you change? What would you do differently? How I, it's that is a, a very tough question, because there's so many things that we can do together as a community as War 12 as a city as a whole. Uh, for me, number one, um, you know, it's it's getting uh, rid of this old thinking and introducing this fresh perspective. And I, I'm young, but not that young. I'm, I know my looks may tell you a whole different story that I'm extremely youthful and, and I get this at the doors as well. And I have to explain to people, this is, you know, my experience, my background, everything I've done. Um, but uh, r really, uh, so I'm a millennial, my generation, and you know, there's a lot of uh, negative stigmas about millennials, and and I'm sure with any other generation too. But with mine, you know, we're 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 known as uh, being a little lazy, wanting everything handed to us, and that that's not true. I mean, there's there's a lot of my friends that are are extremely hardworking. Um, they're go getters like myself, and and I think you know I'm youthful. I have a lot of energy. I I want to build our city to be generational thinking where we can attract younger folks to get involved in their civic duty and to inspire younger folks to get involved in their civic duty and to pave the pathway for future generations. And this is also coming from the family uh, um, uh, where my father has always said to me, you know, my, my job here in this life is to build and pave the path for for you guys for your generation so that you can go on and, and continue that with your family and this is what we're doing here in calgary this is such a pivotal moment in history in our city right now when we have such a large vacancy of uh councillor seats and the mayoral seat and this is where we can kind of start fresh and and pave that path for future generations now, uh, before we get into some policy questions, uh, I want to continue on the line of questionings about yourself. You, you talk about the new generation, the new generation getting up and as a millennial yourself, you want to uh, sort of build the path for the next generation, but also your generation as your father did for you. Do you see other people in this election who are doing the same thing you are doing? Or are you a unique character? Because I think if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. And there's probably going to be someone who sends me a tweet or a Facebook message or the moment this airs. I think you are one of the youngest candidates who are running in this election, if I'm not mistaken. Why, why should we be looking at the next generation to take up the mantle to build back the next four years of the city of Calgary? Yeah, so... We, I would say this, the, the younger generations just have a different way of looking at things, a, a, a different perspective. And you look at Gen Z right now, um, my nephew falls in that category. They're, they're very much uh, do-it-yourselfers. They're, you know, they think they can make a huge living off of being like a, a YouTube star. And, and they're very much like a self-taught kind of generation. And, and they're absorbing so much digital content now. And this is where kind of the world has gone to is absorbing all this digital content. And there's so much noise out there, as you probably can agree. And uh, sometimes just trying to cut through that noise is, is very challenging and very difficult. And um, 
and even looking at our family business, you know, if if we, it, it's not brick and mortar anymore, and and it's more online. That uh, and if COVID has taught us anything, online shopping like spiked through the roof, and and this is where kind of the world is going. And having a younger generation and a different perspective of looking at things uh, definitely helps set the tone for our city to be more generational thinking. And um, another thing that you kind of uh, put into uh, my head or, or I guess uh, a thought that came across my mind is uh, a lot of my friends, you know, my generation, there's, there's just no, not a whole lot of opportunities here in Calgary. And some of my friends have moved to BC or Ontario, some is even as far as uh, Texas or Florida, uh, just because the, the opportunities are, are there. And if it's not us, if it's not now, and if we don't do something to pave that path, my fear is my kids, uh, my daughter is going to leave Calgary. And I'm sure that's a fear of a lot of parents and they want to be close with their children. Uh, at least I know I, I want to be, depending, I guess, on the, on the day of the week. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we, we definitely want to pave a path that our children can stay here and have job, op job opportunities here and to build a life and a career and a family here. Uh, and that's, that's something that, uh, that concerns me as well. And, and it's something that one of the reasons why I got involved. Awesome. Um, let's let's move to policy because this is the part of the conversation I love. I love talking policy with candidates, but also what they're hearing at the doors. Uh, I, I follow you on social media. I know you have been door knocking, whether it be socially distanced door knocking or however it is in the world of COVID-19. You were out there talking to residents of Ward 12. What are you hearing? What are the priorities and the concerns that you're hearing at the doorsteps in Ward 12 right now? And I, I, before you answer the question, I know which one you're going to start off with. And I know it's probably going to be Green Line. We will be talking about that later. What other issues are you okay. hearing about in Ward 12? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I can get down to community specific or kind of Ward 12 as a whole. Um, either way, you... what, 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 either way. And this is the great thing about this. I, I, I take my directions from you on this part of the conversation, sure. because if you talk, if you're going to say there are certain communities that are, there are certain issues in certain communities, I want to know them. People want to know what you're hearing at the doorsteps yeah. because you're going to have to face these when you're elected on this October 20th. Absolutely. So, uh, okay, let's go community. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll keep it brief. And uh, so for Mackenzie Town, for example, I've heard of folks with um, dogs uh, being um, in playgrounds when it's not an off-leash park. And then, of course, they're urinating, defecating the parks, and it's a, a hazard to children that play there. I've heard things from um, keeping the green spaces uh, green and at least upkeeping it instead of being overran with weeds to the trees that, that are diseased, dying. Uh, they need an arborist to come by. And, and that actually I've, I've spoken to uh, Trudy at Urban Forestry about, and they uh, the city is supposedly We'll be doing something in 2022 uh, just because the city has grown so large that they've split it into two halves now and they're currently working on the north end of the city due to also the hailstorm that that took place here. Um, so uh, Mackenzie Town, I, I've heard things in New Brighton Copperfield about the, uh, the smells that come from the ponds. Um, I've heard from Cranston, the folks uh, there seem to be more upset about the snow removal efforts that was uh, done there back uh, last year before Christmas and how effectively snow was never removed and why are they paying all these taxes um, uh, to, yeah, here in, in Seton, uh, noise complaints from the highway, uh, mahogany, I've heard residents would love to get a, another exit out, uh, connect like Masters Road to 88th Street so that residents have a way out rather than just depending on the one entrance uh, at 52nd there. Um, 
Now, so, the reason the reason I asked that, and this is my transition into uh, the next set of questions, is that's a lot sure. of topics. That's a lot of things you're hearing at the door. You, if elected on uh, October 20th, you will have a lot of issues from what you've just said in the last two minutes that you'll have to address on city council, let alone COVID-19. And COVID-19, we're in a pandemic and we're in the recovery stages of the pandemic, knock on wood. How do you balance that? How do you balance the, 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 the needs of the community against the needs of the greater public of Calgary? Because we are in a financial strap right now. And I know on your website, you do talk about, uh, I just want to make sure uh, that I'm getting the right transparency and accountability, but uh, responsible spending. How do you balance yeah. the needs of what your war residents want, which sounds like there's a lot, with the needs of the responsible spending of everyone needs to also look at the greater picture of Calgary as a whole. Yeah, so that that's a that's a great segue into the second question because the the number one thing too that a lot of the folks have told me is economy and you know if, when times are great I'm I'm sure you know we can afford to pay to do all these different things that Calgarians want. And you said it there too on, on my website, responsible spending. And the way I look at that is from a business perspective, my background is in business and uh, having managed and ran our family business. You know, it's not necessarily, uh, you hear a lot of account, some account, council candidates and mayoral candidates say, you know, it's, it's cutting this, cutting that. And I'm not the kind of guy to come in and blanket cut everything with an ax all across the board 20% or whatever the 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 figure is i'm more of a, a surgical precision i want to come in i want to analyze the data i want to figure out what's working what's not working and figure out efficiencies if there are, are any to be found cost recovery if there are any to be found and figure out you know is is the city being overcharged on something or are we not charging for something that we're supposed to be charging for and if, to me, it's very much um, kind of a, a business transaction, figuring out these efficiencies first and, and going from there and doing maybe a complete uh, spending review. And so I, I look at it through kind of the lens of a, a business owner and trying to just balance everything and figure out, yes, we have you know folks here that want these things, but also what's the imp uh, implications, the cost to uh, do this project or to fulfill these needs and then where are we going to find the revenue to support that or what can we do to do to 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 give folks what they want and a lot of it comes down to just being responsible with our our dollars and figuring out how we can tighten our belt a little bit more without uh, affecting jobs and uh, affecting uh, current services um, anyone who's a political observer of municipal councils knows that the first big decision that this council will have to do is the budget. The budget is a four-year process. Um, while it, it's great that you can say you want to look at things with a fine-tooth comb, can you do that in the short time period of being elected and that first November meeting where the budget is going to be starting to talk about because it's a four-year budget cycle that Calgary is in and it is going to be a challenge for a whole new set of uh, councillors to get up and running on the budget when you're looking at it with a fine-tooth comb. So can you do that? Can you say here right now that you'd be able to look at it or it might take a year into the four-year budget cycle to do the, what you've just said that you want to do? Yeah, realistically, uh, Chris, yeah, you bring up a good point. Yeah, this this new council is going to get elected and right away they're going to get hit with this four-year budget and if i guess there's there's two ways of answering this i, I guess for maybe an average person it, it probably would take a year to really dive deep into this uh depending on how much information is given i've never been in that position and i i couldn't say um for sure but I, I can say what I have been doing is analyzing the budget and what we've been giving so far with a CPA who's on my team, my financial agent. Um, and we've, we've found some 
areas where the city could be improving um, and areas where the province could help us out with. So for example, um, and I'm sure that was probably a follow-up question of yours. <laughs> yep. Um, Took the words out the, of my mouth, the, Steve. The, <laughs> Steven, sorry. <laughs> that, no, that's Steve is good too. Um, the social housing projects. Uh, so for example, uh, the province was giving us money for uh, social housing. And part of that was also flood mitigation. And now the province has stopped, stopped completely doing that. I think it was like $150 million. So now the big problem is, as a city who cares about the less fortunate, the vulnerable and protecting the vulnerable, um, you know, where are we going to find this $150 million from to, to uh, invest into affordable housing projects or social housing and and the and and I, I say in a way that this is also not fair that as a newly elected city council you're suddenly hit with this giant um, budget that you're not given an, enough time po po probably not enough information to effectively review every detail with a fine tooth comb and to make a uh, well-balanced decision on. And I, I don't know if this is just the strategy of the bureaucrats or the administration that, oh yeah, you know, we're just going to throw it at these guys and hopefully they say yes to everything. Uh, I'm not that kind of guy to say yes to everything. I love to at least do my research and figure out what, what makes sense. And given the short time crunch, I think all we can do is go at a high level, figure out what's costing the most dollars and and try to figure out as much detail as we can through there and, and effectively make the best judgment and decision that we can in the amount of time that we're given. One of the other areas on your website, actually, it's not on your website, it's not on the platform, but it's on the brochure that I believe you're handing out. You, you talk about safe communities. You talk about safe communities, uh, it's like a little check mark and it says safe communities under your, yes. I want to make sure, on the platform on stephenfan.ca, which will be linked in the show notes for anyone who wants to go check it out for Ward 12. I highly recommend you do. What do you mean by safe communities? How, how will you advocate for better safe communities? Uh, so some of the, and that's a great question, Chris, I, I've talked to a lot of residents, they fear with the green line, and I'm sure we're going to get into this there, uh, with the green line uh, brings a, a different demographic of people to our city. And a, a lot of those fears is like, how do we protect our communities from, from that? And what can we do? And one of the things that um, we don't have that's remotely close is, is a police station and whether that be funding. I know that Seton, the multi-use uh, facility has a small police uh, satellite office, but I don't think it, it's enough to serve this uh, area of Ward 12 just because we're growing um, significantly. And I hear of a lot of things that go on in our communities, whether that's uh, construction theft to vehicle theft to uh, vandalism that occurs. It, it's kind of encompassing all those and trying to keep our community safe. Um, and also uh, with, with even uh, bylaw, I, I've heard, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of stray cats, uh, um, sometimes dogs. Uh, what do we do with all these issues to help keep our community safe and our children safe. Um, one of the big hot topic buttons is, is the speed limits. You know, now that the speed limit's lowered, is that going to keep our community any more safer? Because speeders are just going to speed anyways, but without enforcement, um, nothing's going to be done. Nothing's going to really change. And so those are some of the things that I hear and, and I would love to try to change and uh, make our communities feel safer. Um, I've talked to many Ward 12 candidates and I, I got to ask the question because I've never had, I never thought of this question until I've sat down with you, but you talk about that satellite office for the Calgary Police Service in uh, Seton, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Would you be in favor of actually having a full on Calgary Police Services like office station in Ward 12 in the Seton area? Because to me, it seems like a no-brainer. It, it seems like something that we should be doing. 
when you're talking to Ward 12 residents, are they advocating, are they telling you that we want something like that down here because we need a presence down in the community or is it an issue that doesn't come up and I'm just thinking outside my comfort zone here and thinking that you would want a office, not just a satellite office? Uh, I, I would totally love an office here. I think it, it would bring a, a sense of safety to the area. Um, what I'm hearing at the doors is is the folks are not in favor of defunding the police. Uh, I'm sure we've heard those headlines in the newspaper and in the news. Uh, folks love the police. They back them 100% just as, as I do. I am grateful for their service. And um, yeah, they, they just would hate to see you know, any sort of defunding the police. And that's what comes up at the doors uh, the most. And, it, it, you know, the the logic and I guess it, it, the reality is if you take away dollars from the police, uh, how are they going to keep our communities safe? So I appreciate yeah. you answering that question. Greatly appreciate it. I, I want to turn to the topic of COVID-19. We talked about it a little bit here beforehand, but I want to dive into it. Uh, COVID-19 has reared its ugly head and it has shown a disparity between the people who have income and people who are struggling. And I am not trying to say that uh, glib, but we we are seeing more and more people living paycheck to paycheck and potentially uh, at the moment where they could potentially lose their house. As the next city councillor for Ward 12, how do you envision the city of Calgary helping everyone get ahead and not just the ones who are working and are feeling comfortable right now? That's an excellent question. So uh, to me, economy is, is first and foremost. Um, right now we're in a downturn and my personal feeling is that inflation is a silent killer. I mean, you go to the grocery store and um, what used to cost, you know, maybe a dollar fifty is now two dollars, and it's getting more and more expensive. And I, I, I don't think we have seen the worst of it yet. I mean, I, I like to be optimistic and say this is as bad as it's going to get, and we won't see any further uh, inflation and, and and price increases at the pumps, at the grocery store, and cost of services. Uh, I, I really hope you know it stays this way. Uh, but the reality is, yeah, we, we need to take care of everybody. Um, first and foremost, if the economy in Calgary is doing well and people are back at work and getting uh, making good money, I, I think we don't have to worry about, you know, if we're going to have this uh, division between the poor and the rich. And it's 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 a tough tough balance i love some of the initiatives that the city has taken to uh, address um some of these uh, issues so for example the um mid-cycle adjustment that the city did in the budget to help commercial businesses i've met many business owners here in Calgary and especially in War 12 and they either own bars restaurants or other type of services but I, I hear more from the bars and restaurant owners I feel like they've been adversely affected and you know one gentleman last week told me if we go on a lockdown again I don't know how I'm going to survive and I I could feel in my heart like the pain that he's gone through and even though the city has given them a, a little bit of a, a tax break, I, it's not going to be enough, especially if we go into a full lockdown again. And so I know that helps what the city is doing. And in the future, would there be other services or other types of tax breaks or incentives to try to mitigate, you know, these these losses? I couldn't answer that. That that's up to the the next uh, city council and or this current city council. But I'm hoping you know there's more things that we can do. Um, another thing that we're doing to attract economic investment into Calgary is the Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. First of its kind in in a municipality where the uh, it's basically a, a private sector and public sector working together, collaborating and creating um, opportunities for investment. And it, basically the OCIF fund is matching dollar for dollar for venture capitalist investments into Calgary. And being a, a tech entrepreneur, I feel 
that is where the city needs to go to attract more tech companies here to our city. You look at cities like Austin, Texas, Denver, Colorado, they've done an amazing job at attracting and pulling companies from the San Francisco Bay Area to their cities. And they haven't felt as much of a impact uh, of COVID-19 as we have, I guess, and also with the downturn in the oil and gas sector. Sorry, now, I've probably given you like so no, much stuff. No, we, but we I, could I, probably I appreciate talk that because I, I want to talk about attracting new businesses because it was the perfect segue. COVID-19, this downturn has not just affected Calgary. It has affected the world. Uh, businesses are moving to more, removing the brick and mortar, as we talked about earlier, and moving to a more e-commerce setup where the, everything is done remotely or everything is done online. How do we attract businesses back to our community when other municipalities like Calgary, like Edmonton, like Vancouver, Toronto, Houston, Dallas, all the names, all the cities across this country and this uh, continent are facing the exact same thing. Yeah, we're all competing together. And I think what sets Calgary differently is number one, that that uh, Opportunity Calgary Investment Fund. Uh, it's actually uh, chaired by um, uh, a, 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 an acquaintance of mine, Mark Blackwell, who is very successful in the tech space. And if I had any say into it, and maybe he'll listen to this show, um, but I'd love to see it do uh, change more into like kind of the, the Y Combinator where we're investing a small amount into hundreds of companies and helping them grow. Uh, but you you said it best. Yeah, we're, we're basically, there's all these other cities out there vying and competing for the same kind of companies to, to call, you know, their city's home. And I think Calgary is the perfect storm. When you talk about Calgary in terms of diversity, we're the third diverse in the entire country. We have a, a great um, downtown space right now that's 30% vacant. I, I, I heard from a lot of folks that some landlords are offering a year to two years incentive for for uh, signing a lease with them, whether that's uh, tax breaks or uh, discount on the lease, or even as 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 far as getting a year for free just to move into my space. I think we have the perfect storm there. Uh, we have relatively low taxes compared to Vancouver and Toronto. Uh, we don't have also a provincial tax. Um, the quality of life, I'd say, is is very high. I've, I've seen our city rank with other cities around the world being the most livable cities, like top 20 or top 30 uh, livable city in the world. And uh, I love Calgary. I'm a born and raised Calgarian. And, and I, I would love to even go on the good old road show and, and market Calgary as the perfect place to do business. And I think Calgary Eco Economic Development and Tourism Calgary uh, could probably collaborate together in some way to figure out that. I think Calgary as uh, a product is is great. I think marketing wise, we probably could do a better job there and in attracting companies. Uh, I mean, we don't have to attract the Amazons of the world, but if we can attract smaller, um, small si small to medium sized enterprises, I think that would help Calgary. Uh, I guess lessen the effects of of uh, economic downturns. This, this next question sort of piggybacks onto what you were just saying there. But earlier in the conversation, you mentioned that some of your friends were moving to Dallas, were moving to Miami to find job opportunities. We are seeing a influx. I don't want to say a large, but a uh, we are seeing people leave Calgary to go to school, whether it be students, whether it be uh, people who have lost their jobs and they're moving away to go to school in a different city and not coming back. How do we retain the student, the the people that we currently have, but also at the same time, attract new people to this city? Because you, you talk about how Ward 12 is growing and that's great. It's, I love growth. Growth is awesome because it lowers taxes at my, my at the end of the day, it lowers my taxes and I'm yes. all for that. How, how do we attract more people to the city and how do we make it a vibrant city that it once was before the oil and gas collapse and this COVID-19? Great question, and that's 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 a that's a that's a 
going to be a tough one for um, yeah, city council and, and even a challenge for myself that I'd love to take on. I go back to uh, thinking of partnerships between private and public sector, um, whether that's like a apprenticeship program that you hear in the trades, you know, where maybe we take high school students and find and match them with business owners and figure out, you know, what their passion is and then have like a mentorship where they can go in firsthand, get paid for the work that they put in with a, with a, a private um, with the private sector and a, a business owner. And maybe that might spark their passion to stay in Calgary, get educated here. Uh, I mean, we've got some great universities like UFC, Mount Royal, and even the technical side of things with SAIT there. Um, and I'm sure there's, there's other great schools here that I could just go on forever. <laughs> but, well, uh, but I don't if, want you to go on forever because I just yeah. realized we're almost 40 minutes into this conversation and I haven't no. asked you the biggest question yet. Which is okay. the green line. The green line, Ward 12 is the biggest beneficiary of the green line. I would say that to anyone yes. who is listening to this or any council candidate who comes on this show. Ward 12 is the biggest beneficiary of the green line. What are you hearing about the green line when it comes to the residents of Ward 12? You know, I, I know you talked about the safer communities aspect of it, but are people cautiously optimistic that the shovels will be in the ground this fall? <laughs> or are people just fed up and saying, I will believe it's actually done when I can actually get on the green line? What are you hearing at the doorsteps? Yeah, it's uh, really that, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I mean, I bought my first house in Auburn Bay in 2010. And and uh, at the time, what sold me was, oh, this green line is going to be in five, in, here in five years. And uh, here we are a decade plus later, and we're still nowhere close. So uh, for the most part, residents in Ward 12 are optimistic. They, they love the idea of having a, a green line. Uh, I would say the biggest disappointment is... Uh, that it stops at the Shepherd facility there. Uh, most residents actually are under the impression that it got approved to go all the way to the Seton Hospital, but unfortunately, that's not the case. And so, yeah, I would love to see it go all the way to the Seton Hospital. We need it to go there. Um, residents do want this project. Uh, they they would rather, um, yeah, like if it doesn't go through, I think people will be marching down to city hall with pitchforks and, and trying to get something done about it. And I know Councillor Keating has done an amazing job at uh, pushing this project and getting it kind of going. So yeah, I, I'd love to see it go all the way. I want to, I want to piggyback onto that for a second here, because um, we, as someone, as a business owner myself, as someone who has worked in municipalities, I know that cost overruns can happen. I know that project timelines are not something that are completely etched in stone. They're etched on a piece of paper and they're as good as, as that piece of paper is worth. Um, how will you, as the next city councilor for Ward 12, ensure that this project stays on time, on quote unquote budget, because cost budget. overruns are currently <laughs> are there, yes. but there, there is a potential of something happening. How, how do you tell the people of Ward 12, your constituents that you are wanting to represent, that I will be the voice to make sure that this project happens and it happens to the specifications and budget that is currently outlined and approved by council? Uh, and a lot of the decisions too is, um, to give it some context here, I think a lot of the decisions is sometimes out of council's control uh, in terms of the funding from the provincial and federal government. I mean, we've, we got to work with them. And the only thing that I, I can think of is to continue to put pressure on all the partners that are involved, all the stakeholders that are involved, uh, keeping an open line of communication as well with War 12 residents. I mean, you you touched on my one of my points earlier is accountability and transparency. And I think that's something that this city council hasn't done a very great job at with the um, closed door meetings. And as long as we keep that communication open and holding all the stakeholders and partnerships that are at um, at play here, accountable and putting the pressure on them to get it done on time and on budget as much as we can, 
then I think, you know, this is a, a perfect recipe to hopefully get this thing uh, done right away. I mean, uh, being in yeah business, I think a lot of it is just uh, building trust and making sure that the other party carries through with what they're going to say that they're going to do and, and always having something in writing is the first and foremost rule. Yes. Um, so, I mean... Yeah, if they don't carry through with it, I'm sure there is a mechanism in place in the contracts that, you know, there's going to be penalties involved if, if something isn't done on, on time or on budget as close as possible. So, I mean, yeah, there's the legal avenue, which I rather not go down, but I would yeah. have to, um, you know, continue having an open communication with, with the, all the stakeholders and trying to push them to get this going as Ward 12 residents have waited long enough. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I want to talk about my last subject here before we do wrap up. Um, and that is you as the next city council uh, councillor for Ward 12. Uh, you have, if I'm not mistaken, the last count, I think six or seven candidates running against you or the six or seven candidates running for Ward 12. I don't know the exact number. I apologize off my hand. Uh, for transparency, we are recording this before the deadline so people can still file their paperwork when this airs. It could be different. Um, so hypothetically, you will not get 100% of the votes. You will not be acclaimed because there are other people running against you. How will you yep. represent all people of Ward 12, that's including the people who don't vote for you, if elected on October 20th? Great question. <laughs> I, I love this because this is what I love about municipal politics is that it's nonpartisan. You, you're basically representing you. Um, I, I love to be collaborative. I love to work with people. And I think, you know, given today's day and age, and especially what's happening south of the border, you see so much divisiveness in society these days. And it's this me versus you or the left versus the right. And what I love about municipal politics right now is that I get to represent everybody, regardless of their political background, ideologies. Um, municipally, it's it's completely different, and we just have to remind folks, you know, that we are in this together. We need to find at least some common ground so that we can get things done and bring about a positive change. And so, let's you know, set aside our egos, our pride. And let's work together for the betterment of War 12 and for Calgary. And so, I mean, yeah, this, this, that's the way to do it is to find that common ground. And in today's day and age, it's so easy to um, be yeah, divisive and, and lose that common ground. So, so I want to encourage folks to let's work together. <laughs> so to play devil's advocate here, because that's what I love okay. doing on this show. Um, you will be faced with tough challenges, tough decisions that you will have to make on a day-to-day -day basis. You will have the population of Ward 12 coming to you with every single issue that they, they, they believe and they themselves believe is important. As the next city councillor, how do you plan to be accountable and transparent with the people, using your own words here, to say sometimes we can't always get what we want? We have all these great ideas. Everyone has their own opinion. That's great. But we only can do a certain amount each year. And right now, your issue that you've come to me with as a Ward 12 resident can't be done this year due to financial constraints. But also, there are other issues facing uh, bigger. There's other bigger issues that we need to fa uh, address in Ward 10, Ward 4, Ward 2, Ward 13, right beside you. How do you balance that? How do you be accountable to people when they want what they want and you have to represent them at the, t at the council table? Absolutely. So yeah, we're 12, you know, we're all Calgarians. And like you said, it's a, we're just a small piece of the pie too. And we need to look at Calgary as a whole and do what's best for each other in the entire city. And whether that, you know, you have a specific issue. Yes, we, we, we acknowledge, we realize. Uh, I think really what it comes down to is acknowledging it and, and then validating uh, their concerns and, and then explaining to them, uh, following up with that, that explanation and being uh, transparent in our communication with uh, Ward 12 residents and just explaining to them why we couldn't do something. And I think that's that's you know, most folks are understanding. If you explain to them 
why we couldn't achieve this this time around or or this other time around at least communicate and explain the reasoning behind it i think in business if you just do something without explaining, you know, you're going to get a lot of flack for it. And it's just having that communication and keeping that open line of communication and uh, working with also the mentality that we're, we're a small piece of this pie, but we also have to work and realize that we need to work together as a Calgarian and with the rest of the city to figure out what's the priority here and what do we need to do to, um, make the city a better place and then figure out also what as a community as war 12 what do we want as well and maybe just pick one because maybe there's times that yeah due to financial constraints there's only one thing that we can do or sometimes none of it because another ward maybe ward ward 10 like yourself maybe (laughs) that needs it more than us so um yeah i mean it's just working together keeping that open line of communication and and uh going from there and explaining i appreciate that i have three questions remaining and these are ones that i always ask because i want to know what your answers are first one is day one september october 21st you wake up you are the newly uh counselor designate for ward 12 what is priority number one for you (laughs) Um, oh boy, I feel like there's a lot of things that would go through my head that day. I'd probably get on the phone and uh, call Counselor Keating and be like, hey, can you give me some advice? <laughs> That's probably what I would do, to be honest. Um, I love well, honesty. I love honesty, Stephen. Uh, I mean, I don't know the answer to everything. And, and obviously, Counselor Keating would be the best guy to, to know because he's been in this seat and he's been here before. I kind of have an idea of what I need to do. Uh, number one would be figuring out, you know, um, what my staffing is going to be like, uh, figuring out as well uh, office, the uh, etiquettes, the procedural things. Um, so kind of like the, 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 yeah, the administrative stuff. And then diving deep diving into what my daily routine is going to be figuring out my schedule balancing all those and the times and and then uh yeah just going from there so yeah i i appreciate the honesty i love it um in order to get to october 21st you first have to uh, october 20 yeah no october 18th Uh, yes. October October 19th, please, 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 for those who are listening right now, please go out and vote on October 18th or advanced voting. Do not vote on October 20th, like I just said, October <laughs> 18th. Um, so in order to get to October 19th, you first have to be elected. Talk to the people of Ward 12 right now who are listening or watching this, depending on if they're watching it on YouTube or they're listening it on the podcast uh, available on all platforms. Why should you be the next city councillor for Ward 12? That's a great question. I get it at the doors uh, quite often, actually. And if it's one thing, there's a few things I actually would love to tell Ward 12 residents that maybe if I haven't bumped into you yet, um, you know, I, I have experience in, in business. I'm young, I'm energetic. I'm uh, a person of color. I guess that's the correct way of saying it these days. And, you know, I think it's it's time for a young, new, fresh face and perspective uh, at looking at things with our city council. And when folks are at the polls and they're looking at to, who, to whom they should elect, um, you know, I... I I'm going to say that uh, as humble as, as, as I can be, <laughs> that I think I would be the best choice um, in terms of representing Ward 12, having a young family. And I mean, the, most of the demographics around here are young families. And I want to build a better future for our families, for uh, the future of those that are here in Ward 12. And I will be working hard, that's for sure. Awesome. Um, We have covered a lot in the last 50 minutes. 
Um, but there's probably that one person yelling at the screen or yelling at their car radio saying, why didn't you ask Stephen this question? So for those who are listening, for those who want to learn a little bit more, and then remember this is coming out in October, so there are literally days, almost a week away until election day. How can people learn a little bit more about yourself? The, the best way, uh, visiting my website, stephenfan.ca, or follow me on Facebook. I am more active on Facebook than any other social media platforms out there. Um, yeah, please reach out to me over Facebook. I'm, I'm very active there. So any questions that you may have, I may uh, not necessarily respond to them right away just because I am out knocking doors, but I will respond to them eventually, or I might even uh, clump them with all the questions that I get of similar types and then I will do a video on it as well and as we get closer to the election I'll be doing some uh, either a weekly live uh, or daily just depending on on my schedule and timing but uh, I'd love to do a live session and answer questions and uh, create more videos for folks as as well here. Awesome for those who are listening and watching the links to Stephen's Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter are in the show notes, plus the link to his website in the show notes. Uh, I, I, I keep on beating a dead horse when I say this, but I'm going to keep on saying this until October 18th. Get educated. You, this is democratic right to go out and vote, and you should be educating yourself and getting out and voting. I do not want to see people on Twitter, on Facebook, complaining for the next four years that this person didn't do what they were supposed to do. If you don't vote, you don't have the right to complain. So get out, get educated and vote for the person who's going to best represent you and your values. Stephen, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure. And I feel like we've just scratched the surface, which is weird because we've talked for 50 minutes and I feel like we've covered everything, but <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, we haven't. But Stephen, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you so much for having me on the show.